Uh, we, uh, I, I would like to leave as much time as possible to, for open discussion because I think that's the way we get the most uh, out of these types of sessions. So I um, encourage uh, all of you to uh, think of some questions and even cut me off if you want to. And we can uh, delve into little issues if, if uh, some of the stuff I say you think is crazy or, or, uh, or you completely agree with or uh, you don't understand a word I'm saying. So f uh, feel free to, to pop up a hand and we can keep this kind of informal. Um, but as Gruden pointed out, I'm a cardiac surgeon by training uh, in Massachusetts. And about uh, three or four years ago, uh, myself and a bunch of my colleagues decided that we spent a lot of time in our cardiac surgery meetings discussing a thousand different ways to repair a mitral valve or uh, protect a heart on bypass. But we never really focus any attention whatsoever on the other 90% of the patient's care, which is all the preoperative workup optimization and especially all the post-operative care of the patients, including their immediate recovery in the intensive care unit and uh, their first, say, 90 days of uh, recovery. Uh, and we decided that really there were no best practices. Everybody was doing something different. Everybody thought they were doing the best thing. And the cardiac surgeons still were, at least in the United States, uh, keeping a large um, control over these um, patients and their um, treatments and yet really were not paying attention to best practice. So we decided to start a little organization which subsequently uh, got very large as we'll see uh, and that's what we're working on. Um, I have the, the following disclosures. I am a consultant for a bunch of different companies um, related to some technology around uh, open heart surgery. Uh, so what is enhanced recovery after surgery? Um, I, I'm In Europe People are pretty familiar with this. When I give this talk in the United States, they look at me like I'm a little crazy or maybe they knew someone who heard about it in colorectal surgery. But uh, in this room, are, are people familiar with ERAS, I assume? Uh, it's a, it's, in the UK, it's, it's a big deal. Um, it's a research-based approach using selected pre-, intra-, and post-operative interventions in concert to optimize outcomes in the patient experience. Uh, and they're the standard practice in Europe for many years. Uh, they're up to 20 plus components um, and they have all t types of different benefits but they have been shown to reduce length of stay, blood loss, time to ambulation, complications, the patients are more satisfied and in the UK where we happen to be right now uh, up to 95 percent of surgery patients actually uh, take part in some form of ERAS which is excellent unlike the United States so I'm sort of preaching to the choir when I come to the UK to talk about this. Uh, so it's a little ironic that cardiac surgery uh, enhanced recovery is centered out of a North American center where we barely do it. So that's why we're really trying to get more into our European colleagues who actually have been doing this for a while. Uh, as a little background, that's me on the left operating with my father, who's a cardiac surgeon, Richard Engelman. And the highlight of his um, uh, career was A, operating with me, and uh, B, when they put a billboard up in our little town and we could go take a picture in front of it um, with uh, two of us next to it, so there, there's a little background there. But what's interesting, the reason I point out my father, is the basis of all ERAS in any specialty was actually fast-track surgery, and the word fast-track, coincidentally, was invented by my father. Uh, and he published in 1994 the Annals of Thoracic Surgery, uh, Fast-Track Recovery of the Coronary Bypass Patient. Uh, and this was um, the fast track mnemonic caught on all across uh, many fields. Uh, and then it kind of died out, at least in the United States. People decided that fast wasn't always better and there were cost constraints and it kind of just tweeted out. And now we've kind of come full circle and brought it back in uh, ERAS, which isn't necessarily doing things faster, but doing them better. Uh, and there are ERAS specialty societies uh, all across the world and, and it started with colorectal and it's really expanded to every uh, subspecialty uh, and cardiac however was the last and that's why I kind of grabbed that one and uh, working with ERAS International uh, we kind of uh, developed a team and put that together. Uh, ERAS protocols have been successfully applied to uh, you know many specialties and they have many components. We'll go over them. This is just a little slide about you know, one of the colorectal ones, but uh, some things apply to colorectal, you know, uh, from colorectal to cardiothoracic surgery, and a lot don't, so it's not necessarily uh, equivalent. Um, the, um, the problem with our uh, 